In the last class, we talked about flexural waves or bending waves that were generated in uh, that is possible to be generated in a beam. So, we uh, started with the governing equations of beam and found out that at any frequency you are it is possible that the flexural waves will be induced in a beam type of structure and we found a very important result that in contrast to the acoustic wave waves or one dimensional acoustic waves, we have rather two different types of flexural waves. One is the traveling wave and the other is the evanescent wave. Evanescent wave is generally associated with the imaginary wave numbers whereas, the real wave numbers are associated with the traveling components. Right? So, today we shall see uh, certain aspects of how these flexural waves once they are induced in the structure then that leads to acoustic radiation. So, let us see what we do today. So, here is our beam structure and again at present we are taking this to be infinite. Right? So, we have an infinite beam structure and we are assuming that there is a traveling wave which is somehow induced in this beam structure because something is happening upstream and that leads to a traveling wave. So, we will say that this traveling wave, so there is a traveling wave in beam is induced and just to keep things specific we can call that a traveling wave of amplitude a, but now since it is a traveling wave and it is also traveling in the positive direction, the traveling wave has to be of this form, where k b is fourth root of m omega square divided by e i. Right? So, there has got as per this hypothesis of this problem, we are saying that the structure is bearing a harmonic traveling one dimensional wave. Right? But now, as opposed to uh, usual course in structural dynamics, where we assume that the structure is, vacu uh, is vibrating in vacuum, here we have the structure on one side of the structure, we have the acoustic fluid. Right? So, these vibrations are supposed to be conveyed into the acoustic fluid, and those oscillations of the structure should induce oscillations in the acoustic neighboring acoustic fluid particle which should get communicated all the way up to our eardrums leading to the perception of sound. <coughs> right? So, therefore, what we are looking for is that because of these harmonic flexural waves which are induced in the beam, what is the acoustic pressure field in the fluid. This is a very fundamental problem because we know that the vibration of a structure definitely leads to perception of sound, but the question is how is the vibration of the structure getting conveyed into the fluid and leading to the perception of sound. That is the question that we will try to answer through this uh, simple exercise. So, accordingly what we do firstly is that we will mark off our coordinate axis as x and y. We have already said that the traveling wave in a beam is a e to the power minus i kbx. So, uh, the point is at we will again appeal to our usual continuity conditions. So, the kinematic continuity condition here would be stated in the following manner that the structural velocity must be equal to the acoustic particle velocity at the fluid structure interface. The fluid structure interface is exactly this y equals to 0 condition. So, at y equals to 0 you must have the structural particle velocities matching with the fluid particle velocities 
the displacements of the structural particle velocity should match with the displacement of the fluid particle velocities because the structural particles can neither penetrate into the fluid particles nor can it lead to some kind of a vacuous opening between the fluid and the structure. So, this is called what is kinematic continuity condition. It is a very obvious condition and it will keep coming back in various applications of both vibroacoustics as well as in a general problem of fluid structure interaction. So, this is an important condition. Now, in this problem we are expecting this is a two dimensional problem because the structure is 1D, the acoustic fluid is uh, in a two dimensional space. So, we already know that in a two dimensional space we are expecting solutions in the form of. So, for 2D acoustic space the plane wave is given as uh, I will call this b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y right. So, if k x and k y are both positive then the wave will look in this fashion. If k x and k y are both negative then the wave will look in this fashion right. If one of them if let us say k x is positive, but k y is negative then how will it look like? If k x is positive, but k y is negative then it will look like this right the wave will look like this. So, let us do this carefully. So, again let to draw the picture this is the beam structure. So, if k x and k y are both positive then the acoustic wave plane wave that is going out that is being set out in the fluid is going to be <coughs> looking in this fashion. In red we can mark the opposite situation where both k x and k y are negative. If k x is positive, but k y is negative then we will have this situation. So, this is the situation when k x is positive and k y is negative and finally, we will have this situation where you will have k x as negative, but k y as positive. So, these are the four possible plane waves which could go out in the acoustic space, but in all these situations you must have k x square plus k y square to be equal to omega square by c square. But let us think carefully that out of these four waves if we can rule out certain possibilities right. <coughs> uh, the bending wave that was going in the structure so, the bending wave in the structure is having the form a e to the power i minus i k b x as we wrote in the previous page. So, the bending wave has this form and k b is positive, but then if the, uh, the uh, if this is the pattern of the bending displacement, then what is the profile for the bending velocity? the bending velocity I can call them as call it as v x is given by i omega a e to the power minus i k b x right. So, the bending wave in terms of its uh, velocities rather the, the, the transverse velocities of the particles on the beam will have a functional dependence on x which is given as e to the power minus i k b x right. Now, as I said by kinematic continuity condition you have got to match the conditions at the interface. So, the velocity of the acoustic fluid at the interface which is y equals to 0 plus right from the positive side if you look at the acoustic particle velocity along the x direction that must also bear a functional dependence of exactly the same form which is e to the power minus i k b x. In other words the wave number associated with the x component should be same as the I mean should have the same feature as the wave number associated with the bending wave right. Because you have to match the continuity condition 
at the interface. So, therefore, what we see is that the acoustic particle velocity, the acoustic wave will have a forward in x component, which means I am taking the 2D acoustic plane wave as b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y, right. So, with k x and k y both 0, I am going to get this forward sign here, the wave to be traveling in the forward x direction as well as the forward y direction, right. Now, this is uh, not yet ruled out, but these two possibilities therefore, are ruled out, which will have a negative traveling component in the x direction. It has to have a positive traveling component in the x direction. So, these two possibilities are ruled out, right. So, k x must, <coughs> it must travel in the positive direction is what we are getting, right. Now, between these two, two components, again if you look carefully, what is happening is that here it is the black wave is actually coming from infinity towards the structure, whereas the blue wave, the one with k x and k y both greater than 0 is going from the structure towards infinity. So, this is actually an outgoing wave, outgoing in the sense that it is going outward from the structure into the region of the fluid, whereas <coughs> the wave which is shown in black is coming from infinity and hitting the structure. It is like an incident wave onto the structure. Here we are taking this perspective that we are trying to evaluate the wave which is radiated due to the vibration of the sound. So, the physical cause of the acoustic wave is the vibration of the beam structure, right. So, therefore, the physically plausible condition would be this wave number because that will lead to an outward wave whereas, the other one will lead to an inward wave. That inward wave we have seen time and again we are ruling out the possibility of inward waves in an infinite medium because inward waves if at all it happens it will happen because of reflection. But we are at present assuming that the acoustic fluid is infinite in its extent. So, there is no possibility of reflection. So, that rules out this combination also. So, therefore, the only possibility that we will look at is that this is the structure and this is the acoustic wave with components k x and k y greater than 0. So, again to repeat myself the bending wave is denoted by as a e to the power minus i k b x and the acoustic plane wave p x comma y can now be written as b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y, right because this is the only component which seems to satisfy both the condition that is it is able to lead to a, uh, to a condition where the kinematic continuity conditions can be matched at y equals to 0 and it is also leading to an outward wave rather than an inward wave. The red and the black wave that is shown in this diagram is an inward wave whereas, the magenta and the blue are the outward wave. But the magenta wave will not satisfy the condition of the interface which demands that you at the interface you must have a wave which goes in the positive x direction, not in the negative x direction. The component of the magenta wave is traveling in the negative x direction. So, that also is ruled out. So, therefore, the only possibility that is left is p x comma y must be this situation. So, now again u x which is the Part acoustic particle velocity can be determined in a similar fashion as we derived in the last class k x divided by rho 0 b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y, right. So, that is the particle velocity associated with this acoustic wave, but this particle velocity is in the x direction, particle velocity is a vector it has its direction, we are looking at the x direction. So, what we must have is 
that the particle velocity in the y direction which we will call is u y x comma y that will also be given as k y rho 0 omega b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y right. Now, at y equals to 0 the normal velocities should match right, <coughs> because the, the tangential velocities would not match because we are assuming an inviscid acoustic fluid, but the normal velocities should match and what is the normal velocity at y equals to 0, what is the direction of it? It is perpendicular to the direction of our beam structure which is in the direction of y. So, by kinematic continuity condition we must have we must have u y for all x's, but y to be taken as 0 plus just it is at 0, but on the positive side of 0 to know to sort of demarcate that it is the point corresponding to the acoustic fluid and that must equal the structural velocity which is v x. Remember v a w x is the transverse displacement of the structure, it is the displacement which is occurring normal to the axis of the beam. So, it is a transverse displacement, V x similarly is the transverse velocity of the structure. So, we are basically equating the y directional velocity of both the structure as well as the fluid. So, the y directional velocity as a function of x. So, V as a function of x is this and this is the structural velocity exactly at the plane y equals to 0 which corresponds to the structure right and that must match the plane which is just neighboring to the structural plane, but that plane comprises of the acoustic fluid particles. So, that is what we are balancing. Now, if u y x 0 plus, so if we now put uh, in this formula if we bring y equals to 0 what we will get is the following k y by rho 0 omega b e to the power minus i k x x right that is all that remains because y has been put at 0 right and that must be equal to i omega a e to the power minus i k b x. This is what we demand and this must be true for all x. The only way to make this happen is to choose k x equals to k b, there is no other possibility. For no other possibility can this equality be satisfied for all x's. It can be satisfied for some x's, but it cannot be satisfied for all x's unless you have the condition that k x must be equal to k b. So, therefore, k x must be equal to k b is one condition and the amplitude can also be determined as i omega square rho 0 by k y into a right. i omega square rho 0 divided by k y is the associated amplitude. But then if k x equals to k b then what is k y? k y is square root omega square by c square minus k b square right. So, therefore, associated with this the wave which we started off with is b e to the power minus i k x x plus k y y, where k x is equals to k b and k y is as is given. So, all these undetermined constants b k x k y have been determined at this stage, but the physical interpretation of this equation is what I want to emphasize on. There are two conditions that we should look at. One condition is when omega by c or the acoustic wave number if it is greater than k b then no issues k y is real positive. Okay. We will rule out the negative k y's because the negative k y's will be associated with an incoming acoustic wave that is physically implausible. So, that does not bother us. 
omega by c greater than k b under this condition k y is real and we will choose the positive sign out of it which simply means that uh, under these circumstances we are going to get a traveling wave which travels along the direction given by the wave number vector. So, k x comma k y basically reveals the direction of the wave or in other words theta is equals to tan inverse k y by k x will give us the direction of this wave. So, this is our structure, this is the acoustic wave and this is theta which is tan inverse k x by uh, k y by k x. This is all nice and simple, but what happens if we have the other condition that is omega by c is less than k b. So, that condition is equally interesting. So, if we will have omega by c to be less than k b. Remember k b is the bending wave number and as I said the bending wave is generated by a process which is set up in the structure. The structure has some excitation on it because of those structural excitation there is a bending wave which is generated within the structure. So, the that bending wave number is completely independent of what is happening in the acoustic space. right? So, we could have a situation where the bending wave number of the structure can be lesser than the value omega by c which incidentally is the acoustic plane wave, wave number associated with the acoustic plane wave or it could be the other way around when k b is less than omega by c. If k b is less than omega by c, the associated k y is real positive and we have a plane wave condition all that is very fine. But if then k y in this condition if k b is greater than omega by c, then we will have omega by c omega square by c square minus k b square this is imaginary. right? You cannot have a real number for it because omega square by c square is less than k b square. You will not be able to get a positive number sitting inside the under root sign. There has to be a negative number and therefore, there is no possibility that the associated k y will now bear a real positive sign which is associated with the traveling wave. right? So, here you will get k y is purely imaginary because it is square root of a negative number. right? Now, what is the sign that we are going to choose for this imaginary number? Is it positive imaginary or is it negative imaginary? To look at that, let us look at, look at it carefully. B e to the power minus i k x x is not a problem. The next part of it is minus i k y y. right? So, k y by now we know has got to be either i times some number a or minus i times the same number a and a is positive. right? So, the point is which number should I choose? What happens if I make the first possibility? If I choose the first possibility it is minus i times i a into y which gives us as e to the power a y right? minus i square is plus 1. So, that goes so e to the power a y. So, what is the characteristics associated with this? This is growing in the y direction. So, this implies growing in y direction. What is associated with the other possibility e to the power minus i into minus i a y. This would lead to minus and minus will be plus and then i square will be minus this is minus a y and a is positive. So, this will lead to decay in plus y direction. Right? Now, again we will have to appeal to our physical reasoning to choose between these two signs. This is physically implausible because it is leading to a growing acoustic pressure wave as you go further and further away from the structure. Remember the structure is at y equals to 0. right? So, it is 
very very uh, physically infeasible to contemplate the situation that you will have a very high acoustic pressure as you go farther from the source. Right? So, this is associated with a growing wave solution, but that is not physically plausible. The other solution therefore, has to be taken in which is a decaying wave solution. What is a decaying wave solution therefore, the decaying wave solution implies that this is the structure which is the y equals to 0 plane and along the direction of y the acoustic pressure amplitudes keeps on decreasing, but along the x direction it remains draw a better diagram. So, at x uh, at y equals to 0 along x this is how the plot would look like, but if I travel a little up to a positive value of y then I would get then I would get something like this. Okay. So, I hope you realize that the amplitude of the red wave is lesser than the amplitude of the blue wave, right? Uh, uh, but the wavelength, I mean peak to peak distance in the red and the peak to peak distance in the blue is held same because the kx value did not change across the different layers of y, but the ky value since it is leading to a decay that has caused actually a uh, reduced amplitude of this sinusoid as you travel upwards in the direction of uh, y, right. So, at the end of the day what is it that you will get it you will get. So, by the time it has gone quite a few uh, quite some distance what will happen is that these amplitudes will become extremely low to be of any consequence, right. It is extremely low and therefore, what we will say is that this sort of a response will be present only in the near field. So, this is any significant acoustic pressure is there only in the near field. Once you go far away far and by far away I mean exactly this condition. So, if a y right what is a? a is the factor which is leading to the exponential decay in the y direction, right. So, if a y is taken as let us say 10, if a y value is 10 or you choose a value of y such that a y value becomes 10 which means y is 10 by a. In that case you are going to get a response which is e to the power minus 10 times that which is happening at the structure and e to the power minus 10 is pretty large number, right. I mean it is uh, e to the power minus 10 I am sorry is a very small number. So, therefore, the response would have gone down by a huge factor right from the structure to a distance let us say y which is given by 10 by a is a huge reduction in the acoustic pressure response and that is hap happening naturally. You are not doing anything about it, but it is just that the acoustic fluid is not being able to convey the structural disturbance within its domain. The acoustic disturbances are concentrated within a very narrow region or what we call as near field region. Away from the near field region, the responses are too feeble to even start accounting for it or do analysis for it. So, therefore, we say that these are very, very near field waves and this is exactly the evanescent character that are, you are now seeing even in the acoustic domain, right. In the last class we talked about an evanescent wave characteristics from the perspective of the flexural wave. There we saw that the flexural wave can lead to a traveling wave component, it can also lead to a decaying wave component. So, the decaying wave component was also alternatively qualified as an evanescent wave characteristics. Here we have an evanescent wave acoustic wave characteristics which is coming out in the y direction not in the x direction. Because it is coming out in the y direction we are calling it as a near field wave because near field because all the activity seems to be concentrated in the values of y which are near the structure. The structure is at y equals to 0 for small values of y you will get an appreciable acoustic pressure response, but 
soon enough as you travel to distances y which are greater and you are getting into a condition where a y is becoming large, you are getting a sharp fall in the acoustic pressure by itself and this is what is leading to a near field acoustic wave or evanescent acoustic wave in the y direction. So, therefore, to summarize what we have done is that we have found two conditions. So, I will again draw this graph, this is the graph of omega by c and omega by c is the acoustic wave number, right. So, I am drawing the dispersion curves, omega by c is associated with the plane acoustic wave, right and the other graph is associated with k b which is the bending wave and it is proportional to square root omega, right. So, what we have seen is that for situations where k b is less than omega, this situation, we are going to have a radiation region, right. The condition of radiation is met that is you are going to get a plane wave and this plane wave is going to have the same amplitude throughout. There is no decay associated with plane wave or with this plane wave as it travels. So, this is nice and fine. So, the radiation condition will be met in this region which is more, I mean uh, sorry, uh, the, the region where you will have k b to be less than omega by c, right. Whereas, in the other region where k b is greater than omega by c, there you are not going to have a travelling wave component, but you are only going to have a near field acoustic wave, right. So, in this region you are going to have a near field acoustic wave, which rapidly decays away from the source. By source I mean the structural vibration or the structural bending wave which is the source, right. The source of this sound is the structural bending wave, but then this rapidly decays, right. So, <coughs> that is uh, uh, an important observation, whereas in the region where you have k b to be less uh, than omega by c, you will have harmonic travelling wave and here you will have the amplitude remains constant for all y. There is no drop in amplitude, there is no growth either, but the amplitude for all points within the acoustic fluid is got to remain same. Even if you are sitting at infinity, you are going to get an appreciable amount of sound, right. So, this is what is resulting in this characteristics and this frequency where things are just merging, the acoustic wave number is matching with the bending wave number is called the coincidence frequency. Okay. Coincidence frequency is the frequency where the acoustic wave number frequency is the frequency at which the acoustic wave number omega by c is equal to the structural wave number k b. Okay. Now, let us look try to interpret that modified bell jar experiment as I told you. So, as I said that in the bell jar experiment you had a sound source which is inside a certain bell jar. So, this is the source of sound, right. 
in the first step you evacuated this. So, you and when you evacuate it then the sound turns feeble. In the second step of this experiment which is now the modified bell jar experiment, you put back hydrogen in the same bell jar. So, now you can no longer say that the sound is turning feeble because there is no material, right. Definitely sound requires material for its propagation and the bell jar, the classical bell jar experiment demonstrates that a material is required for the propagation of the sound. But then if I replace this evacuated chamber with the source and everything is same, but I pump in hydrogen, right. And now the I restored the atmospheric pressure within this chamber. So, it is the medium is there, but just that the medium has been replaced by hydrogen instead of air. Here it turns out that the sound is even more feeble. Okay. Let us understand why this is happening. It turns out that the sound speed associated with hydrogen is much greater about 5 times than with the sound speed with air, right. So, what is happening? Let us draw this dispersion characteristic gra graphs once more. So, the structural wave we will assume remains the same. There is no change in the structural characteristics accordingly whatever waves are there in the structure that is not affected whether you put hydrogen, whether you put air, whether you evacuate the chamber does not matter. So, this k b graph which is proportional to square root omega that remains the same, right. When you had air you had an omega by c which looks like this. So, this is omega by c air, right. But now you know that C of hydrogen is more than C of air, which means the omega by C of hydrogen plot will be always lower than the omega by C of air plot, because C of hydrogen is more. The denominator being more, the factor omega by C will be lower, right. So, let us plot in graph what that would look like. So, omega by C of hydrogen would look like this. Right. So, in the first case we had how many waves, wave, uh, I mean what, uh, what would be the waves which would radiate? The waves which will radiate would be all these waves would satisfy the coincidence condition in the first case. Whereas, in the second case only these waves are going to satisfy the coincidence condition. The radiation condition will be met only by these waves. So, these waves radiate in the case 2, whereas here these waves radiate in case 1. Which is air and case 2 is hydrogen, right. So, therefore, now you realize that quite a few waves are not going to contribute this region. All these bending waves are rendered ineffective when you are refilling the chamber with hydrogen, because these waves which are shown in this hashed portion are no longer able to meet the radiation condition and though they are leading to the same vibration of the sound source that vibration is not producing any acoustic radiation far away from the source. By far away you mean one means further away from the near field of the acoustics and it so happens that the near field conditions I mean the, uh, the uh, our ear it happens to be in the far field not in the near field because finally you are outside the bell jar and the conditions will be met such that you are not in the near field but in the far field. So, there is a rapid decay associated with these waves. These waves will 
rapidly decay out as it travels away from the source right and your ear is away from the source and that is why the sound is turning more feeble than it was with air right and this is a very important uh, observation in vibroacoustics. Okay, we will end the class here for the day.